Well, everyone, today was the day. Today was the final episode of Season 2 of Prehistoric Planet. A very sad time in all of our days, but they definitely did go out with a bang with this episode. This episode was fantastic. It had a lot of elements that are there to enjoy. Um, a lot of great moments in general, some pretty good stories, and overall, I think, ended the, the show on a high note. I'm going to talk about things a little bit out of order here. Of course, I'm going to save the best for last, which I'm sure you could probably guess what that's going to be. But I'm going to be all over the place when talking about uh, my, my, you know, the things I have on my mind with this episode. So first, I'll talk about the pectinodons. Um, I really like that little segment for the reason of the, like, we focus on the babies just literally just eating flies. That's great. <laughs> because one of my biggest praises for this show is showing these dinosaurs doing different things that we aren't necessarily used to, especially with how they are portrayed in media, which is almost primarily always hunting, always getting into fights. And, you know, while this show does have all of that, because, you know, that did definitely happen in nature, happens in nature today. But I, I like that we see different sides to it. And it's literally just something as simple as just babies trying to eat as many flies as they possibly can. Now, of course, the father goes after some larger prey. But in general, it was still really cool and a nice departure from what we normally see. I also really like the Mosasaur segment. The Mosasaur segment, I feel like anytime Mosasaur happens, <laughs> essentially, in this show, it, it's really good. Um, in this one, we see it hunting a group of ammonites and just trying to take out as many as it can before they swim on by. And it, it was really fun. It was a cool little moment. It's a situation that we also don't see too frequently, but I believe we do have evidence for, um, you know, for this type of situation happening. So to actually see it happen was, of course, a really cool moment. And another side note, I they actually gave the Mosasaur a flick, flicking tongue. <laughs> you know, like a, like a lizard. I really like that because I mentioned in the last episode, yeah, they are, they are giant lizards. So I, I like seeing that tiny little bit of speculation happen. It's one of my favorite things to see happen in paleo art and seeing it translated on screen is just so fun to me. Next up is the Triceratops fight. And there's actually, there's quite a bit to unpack with this one. Um, so Triceratops is almost did definitely fight like this. You know, there's evidence for it in the fossil record and in the after the episode science show they that's what they focus on they focus on what the entire function of the triceratops frill is they come to the conclusion that it was likely multi-purpose which yeah that's probably the case with most most structures but um seeing it happen on screen like this was was also really cool and i little thing i really like the differences in individuals when it comes to triceratops like some have more curved back horns some some of their horns are curved a little bit forward some horns are bigger than others some frills are a little bit different with ornament with different ornamentation i really like this because i'm mean, like styracosaurus is a little bit different but styracosaurus it proves that there's a lot of variation in that specific genus and honestly i don't see why we can't see a lot more variation when it comes to other ceratopsians in general, like Triceratops. Of course, the 30-year-old male has absolutely huge horns, which again, I don't really see why not. There was likely so many Triceratopses born. We see a lot of times where it's like sometimes spe specific species get like just really huge horns uh, in general compared to their other counterparts. And this one, he's been around for so long that all of the keratin just kind of layers over and his horns just grow to be such a huge size. So I thought it was really cool. And the entire fight in general was a really good portrayal, aside from the fact that they both kind of charge into each other, which if they tried to do that, they probably would break their face. But <laughs> that's just, that's a minor nitpick in general. They definitely did fight, just not really like the the kind of ramming into each other type thing that they portray. Oh, and the Nanooksaurus hunt was really cool as well. When it came to the Nanooksaurus in the first season, the, what I really liked about it was uh, the kind of like drone footage that they had for it. It reminded me of that helicopter footage of a wolf hunt, I think on planet Earth, I think on the first one, which was like a huge one shot, just kind of following the hunt as it unfolds. Now that, that hunt wasn't necessarily like that. They kind of cut down to close shots and things like that. And the same is true here. We get like really like some helicopter or drone shots up in the air following the hunt as it unfolds, which those really help to ground it into reality because that's how most hunts are, are filmed nowadays. 
uh, but also coupled in with some closer shots that we get a little bit more detail as to what's happening. But I, I really like the portrayal of the hunt. I like that it failed at first because more, more often than not, hunts do fail, and they do a good job at showing hunts that fail in this show. And then, of, of course, the second one was more of a success, but I like that they drive home the fact that this wasn't something that was easy, and they really mentioned that, you know, she's going to have to do this every day in order to help her babies grow. There are babies. She has babies. She's trying to feed those too. And um, so there's a lot of, lot of stomachs that she needs to take care of, including her own. And I like that they showed that it was like, yeah, this isn't easy. Life of a carnivore is not easy. There's always risk of injury. There's risk of losing energy. There's risk of just not, you know, getting your food for days on end. And especially when they have offspring to care about, it's a difficult life. And, you know, that was definitely true for dinosaurs as well. And finally, we have the highlight of this episode. I think the portion that everybody was looking the most forward to, including myself, the Quetzalcoatlus versus Tyrannosaurus. Now, I wasn't really looking forward to it because it would be like another really cool dinosaur fight, but mainly because as dark and pterosaurs never really get the spotlight when it comes to really documentaries. I mean, we got an, like semi antagonists in Jurassic World Dominion, but for the most part in documentaries, they're portrayed as any other pterosaur. They get scared away at any given moment. Let me be clear. Quetzalcoatlus was a very big as dark it. It came up to giraffe size. And so if it ever found it itself in a situation to where it needed to confront a T-Rex over a kill that it likely would need, it would probably do it. And there would be a good chance that it could, you know, be semi-successful. Especially if it makes itself look big and does everything it can to try to frighten the Rex off. Now, something like that could go either way. Maybe a lot of times the Rex would be like, oh, okay, I don't really feel like getting injured and it would just leave. Or maybe it would stand its ground, again, if it's hungry enough, which a giant theropod dinosaur is probably almost always hungry. Now, in the, in the episode, it's an Alamosaurus, which, first of all, really cool that we saw Alamosaurus on screen. Alamosaurus was actually the, um, the last sauropod in North America. The only sauropod to live alongside Tyrannosaurus rex. So actually seeing it on screen was really cool, especially with the addition of the osteoderms, which we know that Alamosaurus had osteoderms. We just didn't know the exact orientation of it. But the fact that they included them at all was really cool, you know, I feel. But it was an old Alamosaurus that had, you know, passed on and some troodontids come in and they're first trying to scavenge it. I, I like the little detail that the skin was too thick for them, <laughs> but then the Rex is able to easily take care of it. But of course, the two Asdarkids come in and it's game on. And I like that David Attenborough, or really the writers, emphasized the fact that a fight like this could potentially go anywhere. It's dangerous for both of them. You know, the Quetzalcoatlus could end up losing its life, getting too injured to fly, getting too injured to survive, and the same thing could potentially happen with a Rex. Now, he says that, you know, it could lose an eye, which that's really bad for a predator. Like, if you lose one one eye, you're losing your depth perception. If you lose both eyes, then, well, that's, that's, that's game over. So this was still a very dangerous confrontation uh, for both and both parties involved. And you can tell by the way that they did confront each other. They're both kind of keeping their distance and really only lunging forward at the most opportune moments, much like animals do today. And I like that the Rex leaves. I like that the Rex decides this isn't worth it. This could potentially hurt me. This could potentially be bad for me. I mean, he wasn't thinking that, but <laughs> you know that you get the idea. But eventually he just leaves uh, because a confrontation like that is just not worth it, especially when there's just two of them that he can't keep track of, and the Asdarkids, or Quetzalcoatluses, come out on top. That was awesome. That was a really good portrayal and probably the best potential away it can go. It wasn't to the death. Um, it was just three animals that are hungry and trying their best to lay claim to this carcass, and even after a while, the Rex is going to return to the carcass, so everything's awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and stop fangirling about that little moment, but I, I just really liked it. I liked the way that it was portrayed, and I thought it was definitely a highlight in the show. Yeah, as a final episode, this was a very good one, and I wouldn't mind returning to this one. Howdy, this is me from the future. Uh, I just realized that the recording stopped after I said that last portion. Um, so in instead of just setting everything up and recording that, I just, I'm quickly doing this for the bad quality. But next week, I will be uploading a, a full season review talking about the entire season with more in-depth thoughts. I'm going to be re-watching all of the episodes and get 
uh, more of a sincere thought on the overall, like, the effectiveness of the entire season, if it accomplished what it set out to accomplish, and just, you know, talking over everything a lot more. So uh, be on the lookout for that, and uh, have an awesome day.